routines that make every day as, um, as good as possible, make use of it, really, really make things happen. So you've probably heard of that from smart goals. Sportswear. The sportswear market. Yeah? They don't need a lot of investment. They don't need to do a lot of market research. They don't need to do, uh, apart from that, they don't need a lot of money from, for product research and development. Mm -hmm. So for Nike, as we've said in our own SWOT analysis, um, um, the potential of new entrants in the market is quite high. On the other hand, for car manufacturing companies, for pharmaceutical companies, for electronics, that barriers are higher because you need a lot of investment. You need to invest resources in research, yeah, in product research and development. Even in the market may be difficult to enter, so you need to do a lot of market research as well because you have very loyal customers and belong in two or three brands. So you need to understand consumer behavior really, really well to be able to attract very loyal customers that already follow brands like Samsung or um, Apple. Sony, for example, Sony has lost its yeah. market position. They couldn't keep up yeah. with the changes in the market. So their bargaining power went, go, went down, and down, and down, and down. And they've lost their, um, like, I don't think they, in the mobile industry, they're not a significant player, yeah? Mm -hmm. So that means that that sector is very difficult to enter and um, competing, right? Yeah, so you need to see how the, the, the overall, how easy or not is in your sector. So if you choose it for, um, for the workshop, when you choose a brand or product, you need to, um, um, to assess how, uh, how it easy or not is to, uh, to enter that industry or that sector in general, yeah? For example, here's a good example, publishing. Because now there are online publishers. Amazon can publish books mm -hmm. via Kindle. They have, oh no, publishing. Um, that means that publishing houses have lost part of their bargaining power. Because I think before, there were two or three very important global publishers that sold books around the world. Nowadays, uh, first of all, the asking price for books has went down, has gone down. Why? Because now Amazon sells them very, very cheap mm -hmm. online, yeah? That means that the price that publishers, traditional publishers asked for previously, cannot charge anymore. Who's lost the bargaining power? The supplier here mm -hmm. is the publisher, the supplier mm -hmm. of the book, to the vendor, huh? the seller of the book, yeah? So you have to look at the industry. So questions you can ask, what's the threat of new businesses starting in the sector? How easy is it to start up the business? Guys, we talked about these rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. Rules and regulations, so because, for example, as we've said in medicine, in the medical and pharmaceutical industry, there are rules and regulations that protect um, companies who develop, which develop that technology that is very costly. Mm -hmm. The startup costs are so significant that if there is no government protection, people, um, you know what, what will happen, pharmaceutical companies will not even try to find cure for those diseases. What they would do, I wanted to mention before, they would invest money in um, creating the new diet pill, because dieting pills sell like crazy all over the world. So instead of trying to find cure, uh, cure for cancer, for liver cancer, which may take 10 years to create and launch in the market, you uh, develop technology, you develop a new, you design and create a new dieting pill, which you can launch in two years in the market and make significant profit, because it's a very, very profitable market. People are in, interested in, in that kind of thing. They're crazy. And they were telling me, South East, East Asia, those things are selling a lot. Mm -hmm. Students were telling me, yeah? Mm -hmm. Uh, not, only, not only there, of course, in <laughs> the like U.S. And, 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 and Europe as well, but it's becoming a trend in Southeast um, Asian market as well. So you need to have that, you need to look at the rules and regulations. What kind of regulation is there 
for startup companies. Does the government give, uh, uh, give tax free? Sometimes for, to attract new investment, the government will give tax uh, and other investment incentives. So that means that um, the potential of new entrants is quite high and can pose a threat to established brands. Yeah? Good. On the other hand, if we want to protect our national products, we may raise the barriers to entry so, and we protect our domestic uh, businesses. So we need to look at the industry. Yeah? Buyer power. Here we are looking who controls the market. Is it the buyers or as the company, the brand or the maker of the product? How many buyers are there? Um, can the buyers influence the pricing strategy, the pricing decisions of the company? Can they, do they have the power to dictate terms? For example, if we are very, very strongly customer oriented, yeah? For example, look, even for small companies we can think, guys. Let's say that I, I'm reading out, I have, a, you had done, that, you made that presentation about block of flats. Studios. Um, let's say I am a real estate company and I have a block of flats here in central London that I rent out on touri to tourists or students. Now, I have also a website on. Um, I have my I have my property advertised on TripAdvisor, Booking.com, and other um, commercial websites. Yeah. Everyone who has used my property, my facilities, or my service can write a review. Were they happy with the internet reception? Were they happy with the location? Was the, the, the studio clean? Uh, was everything in order? Was, the, um, yeah, was it uh, cleaned regularly? It means that the, in this case, in, in, in sectors like this, especially for the hospitality and tourism sector, the um, buyer, the client, has the power to determine the terms of my service, what I offer. They can dictate what kind of customer service they want, what extra services they want. So if a competitor uh, offers cable TV, free of charge, and a pool, the buyers will just choose some, my competitor ask the same price, the same rent, but offers more services. So we need to change what I offer. Yeah? So you have to think about what kind of power. Power is not only, buyer power is not only about determining price, but other things that determine our customer value proposition. The thing we discussed yesterday. Brand name, delivery, customer service, quality, um, yeah, convenience, location, yeah, all the different things that can add value to my product. Threat of substitution. Who can explain that? Tian? That's easy. Yeah, come on. Threat of substitution. Now, what do we need to look here? 